Hi, my name is Sean and I'm a product strategist. In today's video, what I want to talk to you about more is product pricing. Product pricing can be tricky to figure out because you may not know whether or not you're leaving money on the table by charging a price for your product that's too low or scaring away potential customers because you're setting a price that's too high. So let's talk about this in more detail. In my opinion, the vast majority of product companies get pricing wrong because they think of competition incorrectly as well. The real competition for your product doesn't come from other people trying to offer similar solutions, it comes from how your customer is trying to solve their problems today. And the data in terms of figuring this out also lies with your customer. We're going to talk about setting effective pricing in a moment, but before that, I want to make sure that you have an accurate understanding in terms of how you should be thinking about competition because it has a significant impact in the pricing strategy that will leverage here. As I mentioned previously, most product companies get competition wrong because we obsess over other people like us who are trying to bring similar solutions to market. In reality, most of our customers probably are unaware of some or all of those other options. And in reality, how they're thinking of potential competition for your product is really however they're solving those problems today. And I refer to that as the existing solution. To give you an example of this in the wild, uh, Intuit, which is a software company that brings products like TurboTax to market, which is an electronic tax filing system and management software, they often get an opportunity to tell the story about how that product came to market and who their real competition was. Inevitably, people guess other electronic filing systems similar to what they were working on building, but in reality, the punchline was pen and paper. Most people are simply filing tax returns by hand with a pen. So Intuit knew that for TurboTax, the primary competitor that they needed to beat was the pen. Now I want to talk to you about how to set effective pricing for your product. And the pricing strategy that I leverage is referred to as the value equation. Now the value equation is fundamentally based in comparing what your customer is going to experience with the existing solution that they're leveraging today. So the cost or the missed opportunity of the existing solution is what provides you with your opportunity. What we're looking for is your product to design a better experience for your customer. Now this is going to mean that you're either going to save them time and or money or generate more time and or money for them. And that should be built into the ROI calculator for your product. And that's what I mean by establishing this value equation. So. What we want to do is we want to design your pricing around a considerable improvement for your customer, if possible, up to and including a 10x return. As in, if the existing solution is costing your customer $1,000 and you charge $100, that product is going to sell relatively well because there is a significant return on investment built into the experience for your customer. To give you a better idea on what this looks like done well in the real world, I'm going to share with you a positive example in the form of Basecamp. So I've talked about Basecamp a lot, it comes from the founders of a service-based organization, but it's essentially project management software. And what they did was they set out to solve their own problem, which I talk about a lot as well. As such, they knew the existing solutions intimately well. So they knew what they needed to do in order to make it better. So the product was solid. And then for setting pricing, they charged less than $100 a month when they started out, which was a deal when compared with other options available on the market. And then as that product became a key part of the ecosystem for the customers that were using it, it became a product that they continue to get more and more value out of. In fact, since then they've raised their pricing, which I believe is around $100 a month now. And since they've made that change, they've been even more successful. So I would recommend you check out more about the Basecamp story and anything else that I've written about or a great book written by the founders called Rework. I also wanna share with you an example of pricing done poorly for a relatively successful product company that people are fairly well aware of. The example I'm gonna share with you is Peloton. If you don't know Peloton, they make premium exercise equipment that has more of an interactive experience and screen that allows you to interact with folks as though you're kind of in a class, but you know, you're really you know, stationary wherever you may be, probably inside your home. So Peloton sells a premium product. They started with an exercise bike, which costs thousands of dollars. It's a very expensive piece of equipment. And it had a very loyal following. They were a very successful product company. Recently, they've decided to switch their pricing model to add a subscription element, and customers are very unhappy with that. Understandably so, because originally, the price that you paid gave you access to everything that they had to offer, including the additional services. Now they're looking to charge more for those additional services, and people are outraged. In fact, some are even calling for the CEO to be fired. So that is not going well right now. I would encourage you to research that a little bit more if you want to know more of those details. But 
from my perspective, what Peloton failed to recognize is that he forgot essentially what helped them make themselves successful in the beginning, which was beating the existing solution, which when we're talking about the customers for a product that Peloton offers, it's gym memberships. And what do people hate about gym memberships? The recurring subscription payments that they were expected to pay for access to the gym. So not only did they have to go there, but they had to you know, be locked into these long-term gym memberships as well, which were painful for people. So Peloton has brought that pain back, unfortunately, and shot themselves in the foot. So that process isn't going well right now. And I encourage you to research that a little bit more uh, to see if you can answer any of your own questions in terms of how not to do product pricing. To get started with setting the appropriate pricing for your product, what you need to do is measure everything you can about the existing solution. Find out how your product specifically is going to make that experience significantly improved for your customer and then look to quantify that however you can. If you're able to do that and then build in a return on investment for your customer, you will set product pricing that will enable your product to be successful. If you need any help setting pricing for your product, email me, sean at nextstep.io. That's sean, S-E-A-N, at nextstep, N-X-T-S-T-E-P.io.